Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos and today we're taking another look at WimSwim, the upcoming software package that's able to merge the power of the continuous simulation of HSPF and EPA Swim. Today we're going to look at how to model a Filtera facility in WimSwim. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process here. If you want to check out and learn more about WimSwim, you can view our free live WimSwim training that's coming up. You can view that in the description box down below and get access to that. But now let's jump into the video. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our scenario here. And so as you can see, WimSwim operates a lot like any other Clear Creek Solutions software package. I'm using the map data that's available in WWHM 2012, but it will work in any other jurisdiction that there's Clear Creek Solutions software from down to San Diego, our California software packages, and so on. So right now I have King 2012 selected. I've selected the CTAC gauge. Let's start building out this scenario here. And this is going to be a really simple scenario here. Let's add our land use base in here. We're going to go with one acre of sea forest flat. I'm going to connect that to the point of compliance. And we're going to run the scenario to generate the runoff from the site. Okay, so that's finished. Now we're gonna to go to the mitigate scenario here at our land use basin. Let's say on this project site, we have one acre of impervious. So one acre of roads flat here. And let's say the project, what we're trying to do with this project is we're trying to filter 92% of the stormwater runoff from the site. Let's say that's one of our project goals. And another project goal was also to mitigate the flow and meet the flow duration standards. So that's our two project goals here. We're going to use Filtera and a combination of other elements to achieve that goal. What I'm going to do here is run the scenario to show you what the flow duration curve looks like before we add the different mitigation facilities. So if we go to the analysis tab here in WimSwim, it's located right here in the top left. Analysis, the same menus appear that are in other uh, of our software packages here. So here's POC1. You can view the flow duration curve. And as you can see, it's obviously not going to uh, meet that, that duration standard. It fails for every flow. That's okay. We're now, now going to add some mitigation facilities. So let's disconnect the POC here. We're going to add our Filtera element here. It's all the way on the bottom left. To connect elements of WimSwim, we're going to right click, hover, and release the right click. Now we're connected to the Filtera element. I'll connect that to the point of compliance. And so here's our Filtera element right here. We can make a number of selections here. What I'm going to do is select the FTPB configuration. You can select any of the Filtera models. You really just want to select one that's able to work and filter the amount of storm uh, of water that you have from your site, the appropriate amount. And what we're shooting for is 92%. You can also modify the media filter rate in inches per hour here. I'm going to leave it at 50 for now. So I have FTPD0404 selected. Let's see how that one does. So I'm going to run the scenario here. And it'll tell us how much the percent filter of the water has occurred, as well as we can look at POC1 to view the flow duration analysis to see if it's meeting that. Okay, so it's filtering 17% of the water. That's really not going to cut it. So let's try and find a larger facility that will be able to get the job done. Let's try 0710 here. Let's run that scenario. Let's see what we get from this one. Okay, that's a lot better, 98.25% filtered. Let's see if we can use a smaller facility here. So instead of using the 710, let's go down to the 406D. Let's see how that one works. As you can see with anything that, have, that has to do with stormwater design, uh, it is an iterative process and it is going to take uh, a bit of time to find the facility that you want to work uh, appropriately uh, for your project situation here. So that was 79.1. Let's maybe try something in the middle here. So I had 406D selected. Let's try, let's try 710D. Let's see how that one works. Maybe we can uh, get the facility to pass for the percent filtered. Okay, so that was 98.25%. Again, I'm gonna stick with this facility for the purpose of this instruction. You can see the filter storage here, and you can even see the 
the, the stage and storage discharge relationship here for the facility. And of course, modify any of these other parameters here. It'll tell you the total volume of acre feet that is being filtered through the facility. Now, if we go to POC1 and we take a look here, We can see here that the facility is not meeting the flow duration standard either. So it's filtering the water that we want, but it's not able to um, account for all those uh, different flows that we need. So we're going to disconnect from the point of compliance here. We're going to add a mitigation facility. I'm going to go with a stormwater vault. So we're simply just going to connect the Filterra facility now to the vault facility, connect that to the point of compliance. Let's quick vault and let's see how close we get when we run the facility, uh, run the scenario here. Okay, let's go to the analysis again. Okay, so it failed, but it passed for a number of the flows. What we're going to do is we're going to go with auto vault here. This will auto size the facility to meet the flow duration for our scenario. I'll move the slider all the way to the right to get the most accurate uh, picture and the most accurate vault. Uh, sizing here. Let's go create vault. If you go to optimize vault, it'll start from these dimensions and work forward, but I don't want to start fresh. So I'm going to go with create vault. And this will auto size the vault facility to now meet the flow duration. Then we'll have the filter element filtering enough water and then the vault helping us meet that flow duration standard. So I'll see you guys when this is done modeling with the automatic vault adjuster. Okay, so our vault facility finished sizing here. Auto pond is finished. We got a 37 by 37 vault with a seven foot effective depth. And then our filter facility filters 98% of the water. So we've achieved both our goals of meeting that flow duration standard while still filtering enough of the water uh, to meet that 92%. And you can see with the flow duration analysis that the facility uh, will pass in this case. So as you can see, uh, WimSwim has all the tools necessary uh, to do everything that we did in WWHM 2012, and then also has the additional hydraulic functions, which we're going to get into in future videos. But that is how to model a Filtera facility in WimSwim. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. You can access that free live WimSwim workshop down in the description box down below, and we'll see you guys next time.